Previously on Sailing La Vida Gypsy, we sailed from Zihuatanejo to Huatulco and shared our stresses on what it's going to take to get out of Mexico. This week, we put all our plans into action and make our way through the dreaded Tehuantepec Pass. Boat life is fun and boat life can be an adventure, but it can also be a pain in the butt. And today is, yeah, today is one of those days. We are here in Huatulco and we are getting ready to cross the Tehuantepec Pass, but we've got a couple things we've got to do. We've got to get into town so that we can check in, check out and fill up our tanks because we need to uh, make sure that we have the ability to motor all the way across this pass if the winds die down. The problem is we've got a big tea pecker blowing out there. That is a Tawanta pecker. It's when the winds are blowing like crazy and today the waves are up, the swell is up and we've got to get all the way to town in our little tiny dinghy. Why do we have to get to town in the dinghy? <laughs> because there's not a good safe anchorage into town where we can bring the boat. So we're gonna try and take the dinghy in, check in, check out, bring the dinghy back full of diesel and do it all while the winds are howling and the waves are uh, crashing. This is a terrible idea. Last week, we mentioned just how limited anchoring space was here in the Huatulco National Park area. Fortunately, we found a spot to take refuge for the week as we waited for our weather window. Finally, the time had come to deal with the port authorities, which were two miles away around the point in the port of Santa Cruz. the bust. We went out there and those waves were like coming. They weren't breaking over our dinghy obviously because we're still here to tell the tale but they were pretty up high and I chickened out and we tried to go to a little village next door to see if there was like a road or something that maybe we can uh, beach land the dinghy and get a cab but the swell is so high that the waves are breaking on shore and that's also dangerous so we lost the fight, but not the war, and we are going to take the big boat over to the anchorage that we don't want to go to, but better be safe than sorry. We anchored where we're supposed to anchor, which is Playa Entrega. To my right, I have a swimming, swimming buoys. And to my left, I have jagged, scary rocks. And in front of me, we've got a bunch of pangas. Kurt says he didn't let out enough uh, scope to swing into the rocks. And that if we hit the uh, swimming area, we'll just be right on it and not over it. But. This is the best we can do. If you come to this area, this is where the poor captain is going to make you park. But again, we're only here for a night or two, so we're just hoping, hoping for the best. But I don't feel good. And I don't like to lose, so I'm a little pissed off right now. But we're going to go and get this check-in, check-out and fuel. Drop the dinghy, my man. Let's get this over with. Santa Cruz is a cruise ship port bustling with activity and full of charm and character. Due to the busy traffic in such a tight area, there's really no safe space to drop the hook and feel good about it. Not to mention the death-defying acrobatic display one must do to get to the port captain if the dinghy dog happens to be full. Got ourselves checked in. He did not let us check in and check out today. Uh, we had to tell him where we were parked. I told him we were parked in the designated area. However, because of the surge today, they're actually making an exception and making us park in another designated area, still in the bay, but on the other side of the bay, uh, because he says that um, 
it's really hard for the pangas to kind of navigate during the surge and there are swimmers there and our boat it's because of the size of our boat uh, 47 foot long 25 feet wide uh, we're just too big so we're we're obstructing the way so now the poor captain has told us to move so that's what we're gonna do Upon further inspection, we discovered rocks and reef all over the alternative anchorage. Despite the poor captain's demands, Kurt was not about to put us or our boat in danger. So we traveled back to our previous anchorage. The next day, we checked out and spent our last night with a beachside dinner as we prepared to make the crossing to Chiapas. I also got a jump start on our upcoming trek by pulling out the quarantine and courtesy flags of all the international waters we were about to cross. We did one last check of the weather forecasts and wind predictions and we were ready to go. We're off. We are going to cross the Tehuantepec passing. Low key, I don't want anything exciting to happen because I want to have a smooth passing, but Kurt last night was like, I hope something a little exciting happens so that it's worth catching on camera. The curse of a YouTuber. But I see some rain clouds up ahead, so hopefully that's all the excitement that we get. But um, we're gonna wait for the sun to come up so that we can show you guys around because right now it's kind of dark, obviously still using the red light. So see you guys in a few. Ooh, we're witnessing many firsts right now. These radars are supposed to show you not only the land, which is going to be on our left side, but they are also meant to show you a big storm cells uh, as well which is gonna come in handy a lot when we're doing our tropical sailing and our Caribbean sailing, but over the last year and a half, we haven't seen any rain. So this big blob you see right here is a storm. Hopefully not a lightning storm, just a big rainstorm, but oh my gosh, you guys, this is happening. New things. <laughs> All right, these winds are filling in nicely as they were forecast to do so. It is eight o'clock in the morning and we've already got 12, 13 knot winds. They're coming at a close reach and so we're sailing at about eight to nine knots right now. And it uh, looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day. This is forecast to stay this way for about two thirds of the trip, for about 170 miles or so. The last little bit, it may start to tail off, die off, which is fine by me. But I'm gonna be vigilant and keep my eyes open because I know that things can turn on a dime. And so, uh, yeah, we're not, we're not gonna get too comfortable here. One nice thing about this crossing, even though it's supposed to be a dangerous and stressful crossing, is one, weather forecasts have gotten so good now that I'm really not stressed about this. I think we've got a nice long weather window. We shouldn't have any problems. And two, because everybody's been waiting for this window, the boats have been piling up in Huatulco. So there's actually about, supposed to be about six or seven, maybe eight boats crossing today. I can already see several of them on the horizon. So we're not going to be the only people out there. If anybody has any problems, there's gonna be a lot of people to lend a hand for help. about to start our next overnight. This is probably what the eighth, ninth overnight sail we've done in the last couple of weeks. It's uh, it's getting a little old, but I guess we're getting used to it. 
going to do hopefully one overnight on this passage. We're uh, planning on getting to the Marina Chiapas right at sunset tomorrow, but that's if we can keep the speed up. Right now, the wind hasn't been cooperating with us, so we may have to do a lot of uh, motoring from here on out. Almost 59 miles left to go. Uneventful evening. Well, pretty eventful sailing wise. I, uh, my shift, I kept it up like six to eight knots the whole time. So I bought us some time. I don't know what happened to Kurt afterwards, but uh, my second shift we were motoring by then. So it looks like we made good time last night. So it's time for some breakfast. Get some energy to get the rest of the day done. Weeks of planning, stressing, and losing sleep over the Tehuantepec winds ended up being a relaxing, soothing, and smooth ride through water so calm it felt like a lake at times. The passage required little effort besides keeping an eye out for random fishermen who also decided to take advantage of the weather window. Even Mother Nature was giving us signs that all was going to be all right, as she sent tons of the calmest sea creatures we know to tell us to sit back and enjoy the ride. Well, I'm just passing time here, motoring into our port, and I'm just counting the turtles. There's another one up here. Jeez. This one's gonna go right between our hulls. They're thick, they're like mosquitoes out here. This gulf is absolutely full of turtles. Here comes another one. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I've lost count. It's my pastime now while we're motoring. I've got, you know, maybe six more hours to go. There's no wind, there's no waves. All there are are turtles and there's turtles everywhere. I'm just trying to avoid them. They're so thick, it's, you know, I, I haven't hit one yet, but they're all over the place. This gulf is full. some change later and we have finally made it to the very bottom port of Mexico. We are finally approaching Chiapas, the final stop. And it feels so weird. Right over there on the other side is Guatemala. And right in front of us is Chiapas. This is the gateway that is going to Central America. And I feel so many feelings, but the biggest feeling I feel is tired. I am pretty excited about getting to this marina, taking a nice hot shower, sleeping a full eight hours, and just chilling here for the next couple of weeks. So, ah, we did it. And you guys have been with us the whole time. Pretty cool, huh? Guatemala. Mexico! Oof! All right, guys, we have made it to Marina Chiapas, as you can see right there. Could not film much of anything because there's a construction right next to me, that banging you hear. And also when we got here, the officials were waiting for us. So you have to wait for the port captain to come on the boat and the drug dog supposed to come on the boat. Drug dog didn't even come on the boat because Brigby's a girl and the dog was in training and something about her being a girl was gonna make it pee all over my boat. I don't know, just know that we made it. We did it! We have been doing a lot of sailing over the last couple of weeks, but we are a sailing channel, so I guess that kind of makes sense. But we're gonna stick around here just for a little bit. We've got a couple of land activities that we wanna go do before we get out of Mexico. 
And then once we're out of here, we got even more sailing to do because I think we're trying to jump through all of Central America and maybe get to Costa Rica, but you guys are just gonna have to come back and keep coming back to find out. So if it's your first time here, make sure you guys smash that subscribe button. If you've been here before, hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? And patrons, thank you so much for putting the win in our sales. We can't do it without you. If you guys are interested in our patron, check the link in the description below. And we will see you guys next week.